Hi, everybody. Um, we are going to start this meeting today at 6.05. And we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we don't have any adjustments. Next is approval of minutes. Looking for approval for Monday, November 14th, 2022, regular meeting at 6 p.m. Thursday, November 17th, 2022, workshop at 4 p.m. Monday, November 21st, executive session, 4.30 p.m. And on Monday, the 21st as well, regular meeting at 6 p.m. First, seconded by John, thank you, all in favor? favor. Public comments? No? Okay. Communications? None. Committee reports? None. Superintendent's report. Mr. Nelson? Okay. So uh, if we don't mind, uh, we'll jump right to it. We have a nice turnout today. I am very um, pleased and proud uh, to have our uh, Sanford High School marching band and members of the marching band and um, director Haley Francoeur here. So if they don't mind, uh, I'd like to invite them up to um, either the podium or up here, if they don't mind, because uh, I'd like to hear from them about their season and their gold medal winning band. If you mind uh, coming up, uh, folks. All right, file in there. Perfect, well, thank you very much for uh, inviting us here. We're all very excited. Sorry, I'll try to like peek if, over the camera. If you look on the camera, they can't see some of you at home, so we want you to, that you may be happy with that, but I don't, if you're, gold medal, if you're gold medal winning, you're used to being in front of people. There we go, excellent. <gasps> Perfect. Um, all right, I just wanted to say a couple words and then uh, I think a couple students just wanted to speak. Um, but just to give you a little bit of background about these guys, um, the marching band started working together in August uh, to put our show on the field. Um, about half of the marching band was brand new to the activity, um, as well as some of the marching band was made up of Sanford Middle School students. Um, so we have a very wide variety of students here. Um, I'm sure as many of you know, our show is titled We Are Spartans. Um, each movement of our program was centered around a key characteristic of a Spartan. Uh, and then we pulled in a piece of Sanford history to relate to that as well. Um, so, for example, for discipline, we had a clip from the 1950s talking about the Sanford Goodall Mills, um, just because of how important the mills are to our town. Um, persistence, we had a voiceover of Vic Firth, um, who is world known for his drumstick manufacturing and just for percussion education in general. Um, and then for our last movement, Strength, we listed a bunch of positive qualities about Spartans um, and just listed as much as we could. Um, planning for this show started last January um, for myself and the staff um, and to see it come to life and to see the students execute, execute it so well, um, it was truly magical. Um, I just wanted uh, to do the show theme specifically for the new uniforms that uh, we got and that the students were able to don this year. Um, so that's another thank you to our town for that. Um, it looked great and I'm glad that they were able to um, really make the town proud with that. Um, we perform in the Maine Band Directors Association circuit here in Maine. Uh, show started in mid-September and went all the way down through October. Um, every Saturday during that time frame, these students gave up basically their entire day. In the morning, they'd rehearse, then they'd load the trailer, then they'd go to the show site, usually getting back at 9 or 10 p.m. Uh, there are 10 bands in our circuit, some are even from New Hampshire, and the circuit's based off a star rating from one to five stars, and five being the highest. Um, our first show, we had numbers as high as four, and nothing lower than a three. Uh, we get judged based on general effect, music, color guard, percussion, and drum major. Um, this is the first gold medal that Sanford has seen since 2017, and the third one in the band's history. Um, if you'd like to, this is my little plug here, if you'd like to see more of our music department, we have a winter concert next Thursday, December 15th at 6 p.m. in the Sanford Performing Arts Center. You will see some of these students in it. Um, our winter percussion and our winter guard groups also just started. They brought home gold medals last year, and we are looking to do that again. So uh, keep an eye out for shows starting in February. 
Um, at this time, I'd like to invite our drum majors for the season up, Hannah Patterson, Charlotte Smith, and Grayson Needham. Hi. <laughs> um, uh, I was very lucky to get the chance to work with the entire band. Um, we had an amazing leadership team this year, and I am really grateful to say that I got to work with these two. Um, and it was just really amazing to see how even though we all come from different schools around the area and even though the theme of Spartans might not apply to everybody we all were able to find ways to connect to the theme of the show and connect to each other and make memories um, and really put everything that we had into the show to be able to really I don't know connect to the history of Sanford and you know make everybody proud and I think I can say for all of us, it was insane to see the community support that we got. I don't think I've, in the 10 years I've been going to these shows, I've seen a reaction like this from the community ever. And it was just something I never thought I would get to experience. So we're really grateful for all of that. Thank you very much. Well, don't get off. We oh, might have a few comments and questions, right. I know, to, oh. to run off uh, to do that. But school committee, any um, thoughts, comments? I just wanted to say that I was able to go to um, the show that was hosted in Sanford earlier in the season. And it was really impressive. And I think it was all work that you should all be really proud of, um, an important part of our community and um, you did an excellent job representing the community, so thank you. Yeah, I, I, I'm certain it was Don Jameson and his wife Kim, who, Kim's a piano teacher, and Don, just kind of a guy that knows music better than I do, but he's the one that got me interested in, in the knowledge of what you're all doing. I can't play an instr instrument. I can barely hit a five-gallon pail with a rock, but I, I think it's been great. I've been a supporter of, of all things music in Sanford, and I'll continue to be, but you, you've got a talent that you can take the rest of your life, so. Be proud of it and keep practicing. Thank you. Amy? I mean, amazing job. Congratulations to all of you. Thanks for putting Stanford on the map. Yeah. I, I don't think people realize all the work that goes into it behind the scenes, right? When you talk about coming in in August to be able to look at, uh, and you talk about the all day Saturdays and the rehearsals and the organization that it takes behind the scenes with um, all the volunteers and the parents. Uh, it is amazing when you look at uh, all that goes into that. And typically, for the last few years, we Sanford as a host, we've been kind of the end, uh, at, at the end of the season, right? The, the finals were with us, and yeah. one year I think we had the last one before the finals mm -hmm. to be able to do that. And this year we were hosting earlier in the season. And so I know as I went, uh, and I don't, like Jonathan, I enjoy it, but I don't want to pretend that I know a lot about the intricacies of that. But I love the theme of We Are Spartans to come back and how that was tied in. I love the new uniforms. Those look sharp. But I also thought from this um, untrained eye that we did really well at the beginning of the season. I remember telling Haley because at the end when we saw the scores that came out, I was like, whoa, those scores in that early in the season was something to say um, I felt like there was a nice foundation there to be able to build off of and to be able to do that because you always are tweaking things and changing things as you're going along to be able to do that. And the community pride that comes along with all of this as people have already talked about. So it was one of those situations where we all know the hard work that goes into that and thank you for doing that because it sounds like you found it personal satisfying, but I also know as a community, we found it very satisfying and very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Good job, Haley, talking about the concert next Thursday. Thursday night. 6 p.m. Performing 6 Arts Center. 6 p.m. Sanford Performing Arts Center, the holiday concert with that. Looking forward to that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
You're welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting, or if you want to go home and do your homework, you're also allowed to go and do that as well, uh, as well. But thank you. Yeah, no pressure at all. Uh, also, um, later on in the uh, agenda, we'll have our athletic director Zach Lumlin kind of give a fall wrap up and a winter pre preview. But we also had another uh, award uh, this past fall season coming from our uh, boys soccer team. So, uh, Mr. Lumlin, do you want to come up and kind of uh, set that up for us? Because that's something else we want to also recognize that we're very proud of. Yeah. What are you laughing about? Um, I wanted to take the opportunity to recognize our boys soccer team. Um, they had a terrific year. We have a first time Sanford head coach uh, and coach Bill Puffer and he started you know late in the summer as I transitioned to becoming the athletic director and, and I know coach and I kind of learned together and and he had um, some very specific ways and the things that he wanted to do with the soccer program that the minute we met and we talked about it I was like wow this is this is gonna be awesome um, and and it wasn't necessarily you know the skills and drills and things like that because once again, I'm, I'm not much of a, a soccer guy, I'm more of a football guy by sport, and so I, I trusted Coach on that, but the things that he talked about that I thought were, were really the most amazing things were, were building a team and kind of the dedication that they were gonna have to each other, and I think that it speaks volumes to you know, winning the MPA Sportsmanship Award and being recognized at the state championship game. Um, only one team got that for Class A, and, and we were, I would say, lucky enough, but I know how hard Coach worked to to build the team and continue to have this program going uh, in a positive and, and, and a right direction. Um, so kudos to all of them. I wish I could take any credit for it, but uh, Coach Puffer, Coach Hamilton, Tyler, and, and JP are here. So uh, congratulations and thank you for your hard work. And I look forward to, to where that's going to go in the future. Oh, I'm not, my, my microphone's off. Sorry about that. Uh, but, but, I also, but I also think, uh, uh, Mr. Lemlin, this is also voted on. My understanding is it's also voted on by um, not a special group, but all the other coaches. Do I have that right? Correct. Right. So it, it, it's voted on by uh, other athletic directors. It's voted on by officials and other coaches. Um, so it, it, it's a long list of of things as, as to when our team shows up with how they show up in attire, how they act on the field, how they act after the field. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that go into it more than just, hey, they're really nice kids and, and you know, the coach was, you know, gave a great handshake. Uh, there's a lot of things that go into that which go to show that it's the program's going in the right direction from, from top to bottom. I'm really proud of that. Thank you, Zach. And I am Bill Puffer. It is my first year. And I'm happy to be here tonight because it, this award is really speaks to what we had for leadership on the field, particularly amongst our two captains. And that was uh, John Paul and uh, Tyler LaBeouf. And it, it's really all about them and how they, um, what they stood for and how they uh, coalesced, co coalesced the team onto the field and made the impression that they did uh, with the other coaches. So I couldn't be happier to have them as two coaches. And I think you're... You are blessed to have them as representatives of your student body and uh, the school. You guys want to say something? <laughs> <laughs> you lost for words. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, sure. That's John Paul. All right. No. Uh, no. Uh, but once again, thank you on behalf of I know the community and the school department. Uh, at the end of the day, it's competitive. We want to go back and, and do that, but it's also about how we do things. And that's, I, I'm, you know, I, I think that, as uh, Mr. Lemlin mentioned, that's something that I think is so critical. So kudos to you and everything that you folks stand for and what you're able to do. Uh, John Paul, we can put you on the spot now. We'll circle back to uh, student representative reports uh, with Aiden, Emma, and John Paul. Anything you want to share with us as far as updates? Uh, I have two notes. Uh, just a reminder that the NHS induction is tomorrow night, um, and that will be starting at 7 o'clock. And then also another NHS um, announcement. NHS is uh, sponsoring a toy drive at next Friday's um, basketball games. 
So the basketball games start at four, and uh, Sanford's actually hosting all five, so that'd be both girls games and the three boys games. Um, so we're collecting toys uh, to donate to Santa's Claus, so you can just bring a toy to the basketball game and uh, as a donation. Um, I just want to give an update on the Spree of Trees event that happened recently. It was on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of this last week. And so um, the money was donated to the Sanford Alumni Association. And so um, they used this money to basically um, use for any projects that aren't already funded. And it was estimated that over $20,000 was raised just from this event, which is incredible. So yeah, I just want to give an update on that. Uh, and then I'll wrap it up with um, some sports stuff. Last week there was a girls scrimmage and a boys scrimmage. Um, I know that the boys lost, but I'm pretty sure that the girls won. And this past Saturday there was a wrestling tournament in um, Oxford Hills, and we came in third. Okay, um, thank you everyone, and so uh, we'll move right in as, also as updates and recognizing. Uh, if you can bring that up, uh, Sarah or Beth, about the Sanford Spotlight. Do we have that? I think we can pivot, if it's okay if people want to pivot. Zach, you want, Mr. Lemlin, you want to come right up? And that means Mr. Lemlin's presentation as well, correct? Okay. And that also probably means Sam's presentation as well. As people head for the exits. All right, thank you. It was nice to have you yeah, while you were here. Uh, we'll be here all night. Yeah, yeah thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. No, I think uh, we had some adjustments. Okay. So uh, I do have the Sanford Spotlight uh, that I can move on without having that up on the screen. We'll just talk about some of the things that we are going to be coming in in the latest edition. With that, uh, starting off with the high school and SRTC as part of last Friday's uh, holiday, Holly Days Parade, um, we had students at the high school and SRTC sign banners. And those banners had messages with handwritten, um, that were handwritten. Uh, giving thanks to local first responders. And so the banners, which were created by the city uh, uh, and signed by our students, were displayed on the fire trucks along the parade route uh, with that. And I know uh, holidays is a, a tradition, uh, and it's a pretty big community event. Uh, as I was there, we got to see a lot of our students involved in that. Uh, whether it was our uh, pep club and cheerleaders, the marching band also uh, performed as well, and a lot of other uh, community organizations that our students belong to. So that was nice um, for that. Uh, going to the next page, Sanford Middle School, uh, they have, um, there's a main Audubon conser conservation program called Stream Explorers, and they came and visited Sanford Middle School. Uh, the weather really cooperated that day. Uh, so that's something that our students prepare for in advance. And then uh, they're in there uh, to um, also check to see if the stream near the school is polluted, moderately polluted, or not polluted at all. So we had a lot, a hundred of our students basically working on that. Uh, so that was pretty neat going on at Sanford Middle School. Uh, at Carl J. Lamb, uh, they had some of the students in Miss Clark's room um, as they were inspired by the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. They paraded their artwork through the halls in the offices for all of uh, the school uh, to see um, with that. And then they also had a big day of uh, turtle tag. And that was the day that Team USA was playing Iran in the World Cup to be able to come back and uh, see that. And just a reminder that uh, CJL is having a free movie night coming up this Thursday uh, with that. Doors open at 5, 5.30 to 7 um, for that. Margaret Chase Smith School has been building uh, what they call their WOW skills. 
wonderful original work of art and they spent uh, several weeks uh, doing that for that project and they've um, demonstrated that behavior there. This edition of the uh, Sanford Spotlight, Sanford Pride, we're focusing on our foster grandparents that are part of the Pride team there. Uh, with that, they create positive relationship with the students by working with small groups as, um, as well as one-on-one -on -one, uh, do that. So a big thank you to our um, uh, foster grandparents program at Sanford Pride. Sanford Community Adult Education, their new term began today. Classes are offered in the mornings 8.30 to 11.30, afternoons 12 to 3, and in the evenings 5 to 8, Monday, uh, Wednesday, and also Tuesday, Thursday for that. So we have students who are working on the high set, but also there's a lot of uh, enrichment classes as well. Uh, also, uh, we want to feature our Sanford High School online newspaper, the Spartan Times. There's some links there to some of their uh, recent articles, including uh, winter sports tip-off and a fall sports recap. We also have uh, announcements as part of this. We made some uh, route changes to our buses uh, that started today. We also have uh, assistance for the holidays, uh, a link there. Uh, also, um, making sure people are signed up so that they can receive the ever so popular no school announcements. And then, uh, as always, uh, seems that way, we're continuing to be hiring here in the Sanford School Department. Uh, also uh, coming up, in addition to our high school and middle school winter concerts, the Victorian Nutcracker is coming to the Performing Arts Center this Saturday, December 10th with uh, two shows, one at two and one at seven. Um, Margaret Chase Smith School is helping with the welfare, uh, the Animal Welfare Society um, with that as they are uh, doing that as modeling empathy. And so they're uh, trying to meet the challenge of collecting 100 pet food items during the next week, uh, next few weeks. And as uh, John Paul mentioned, uh, the National Honor Society at Sanford High School has a toy drive uh, coming up at uh, this week's uh, boy-girl doubleheader in basketball. And then you have a couple of the just important dates that are coming up, as well as we always try to keep people linked in to other things going on in Sanford. So you can see there a lot of the other different links that people have. So uh, that's fresh, uh, fresh off the uh, press. And so we will be releasing that um, in the next day or two uh, to get that out. Um, at this time, I'd like to uh, introduce um, uh, the public to our communications coordinator, Sam Bonzi. Sam, if you want to come up and you can grab a, a seat there and turn the microphone on. Um, I've asked Sam to um, come in and give us an update of how things are going uh, with his, um, from his perspective and his position uh, with that. So Sam, take it away. You hear me okay? Oh, whoops, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, thank you all for your time. Um, so I was hired here back in uh, uh, late August before the school year started. Um, and during my onboarding, uh, one of my tasks was to go around from school to school to gauge the strengths and weaknesses um, for communication at each location. Um, and I also talked to members of the community as well, whether that was um, um, Zach Lemelin or Sarah or uh, Brett Williams or um, Jordan Wilson with the city, um, just to kind of get a gauge of what the communication is like in Sanford. Um, and based what I kind of found was that there was, um, there was a little bit of a lack of clarity and issue with just with um, information getting to the right people with the right information that was happening. And so what I've been drafting is this um, school communications plan, um, assignment and editorial board, and also just future plans that I would like to implement going forward. Um, so you see up here, I'm not gonna get into like the exact minutia for, cause that's, that'll take up everybody's, that'll take too much time with this. But um, basically with this um, communications plan, um, it focuses on communication within the school district, parents um, in the community and with local media. And really what I want to try to focus on is to clarify that flow between myself and also administrators at other schools as well. Um, and to provide training to administrators um, with effective communication. That training would be more with, um, with Thrillshare, with the AptG, the app that we've been using to kind of um, get people squared away with on that front. 
um, to create a system to encourage overall, overall flow of information, um, to publish and distribute information such as the newsletter, and with all the uh, newsletters at the other schools as well, um, to you know to communicate with civic and community groups, um, be visible in the community, um, and attend meetings like this, and also. We should have fun and highlight the success of staff for this as well. So. Yeah. <laughs> I can do karaoke if you guys want to. Yeah. So yeah, there are just like two target audiences that we're trying to look for here. One is internal, that would be students and staff, and then the other is external, that would be obviously parents, guardians, uh, parent organizations, um, also uh, prospective students, families, and, and employees, um, and obviously electronic media and print media, because like we said, we want to, you know, as much as like people come here for other things, like we want to have media come here for, what, for when things are happening that's positive come, happening in the community. Um, thank you, Sarah. Um, and these strategies, they're not too complex. We want to keep things as uh, as simple as possible. We want to ideally, I would like to have this communication to be like conversational, not like that we're just like robots behind the screen, like saying like this this is this is happening right now. Um, use just clear, concise, and non-educational style of um, for all general publications. Um, also, just be in front of what's happening, communicating early and often. Um, Prepare info sheets when appropriate. Uh, follow up with memos or communications. Um, also, communicate face to face. I just feel like there's a lot of on honesty in communicating face to face. That's um, you know the more difficult the situation, the more important it is to do that. Um, and also to encourage staff to relay messages through personal interactions when appropriate. Um, keep it brief and to the point. We don't want to be long winded. And just just say what needs to be said. Um, Train staff, that goes back to Thrillshare and Aptigy, but we can also train staff into uh, maybe going back to that, you know, making it more conversational in that regard. Um, and also, we can study the media, study the latest trains as to what's happening, whether that's with um, how other school districts are using their social media um, and trying to see what they have done well and also see what they're, like, maybe listening to podcasts as to what they've seen that doesn't work well as well. Um, it's, and then as far as communications uh, methods, we have in-person, that would be, you know, parent-teacher conferences, uh, school committee meetings, and um, advisory councils. Um, as far as written, we have our classroom newsletters, and of course we have the, the district newsletter as well. And then with that electronic, we would have, um, we would make sure that uh, all board meeting minutes would be posted in a timely manner on the school website. Um, Department and school information will be posted on the district and school websites as well. Um, like I mentioned before, we have um, Thrill Share and Aptigy, and then that, would, that links to all of our social media accounts. That's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Infinite Campus. We also have a community calendar and text reminders and emails and everything. And as far as communications goals, we really just want to be able to you know, develop a strong um, relationship with everybody in the community um, and just I feel like if I were to have a kid here, you know, we were trying to think of like what school you would want to go to, I'd want to know what, that, we, that this would be a place where my school would want to go to by having that consistent communication. Um, and also, part of that is also going to be dealing with uh, crisis communication and management. Um, we want to provide timely information in the event of a crisis or emergency. Um, and using the necessary tools such as social media, emails, phone calls, stuff like that. And um, as far as the, uh, the kind of like the inflammation uh, plan, this would be like a communications matrix. And I did note that this is kind of just like a guide. There would be different circumstances that we might have to do something else. Um, but with general information, we would want to use uh, the website, email, text, and social media. Um, don't really need a phone call for that. But with pretty much everything else, with emergencies, early dismissal, delayed opening, and school closures, we would ideally want to have everything from web, uh, website, email, text messages, social media, and the phone call as well. And so this, um, this is something that I've used in um, prior experience. This is what I would call um, an editorial board or like an assignment board. So basically, in, it's basically just like a schedule of events or like edit, 
things that you would put in that, you, that we would want to have highlighted and covered, basically. Um, so that would just be at all seven schools or anything else that would be happening Monday through Friday. And I would also encourage um, all staff to reach out to me if they have events that they would like to be highlighted. I, I can share this form. So if people would want to just go in themselves, they could put events into that as well. So. And as far as future plans, um, I think it would be important to offer training sessions for administrative with real share and other, and other things as well. Uh, we could dive into more of our resources. We have the Spartan Times, uh, the newspaper, uh, WSSR, obviously, um, and with City Hall, you know, with working with Jordan Wilson with the city's communications coordinator and with Brett Williams with the Performing Arts Center. And uh, lastly, I think, you know, let's get creative with it. I mean, I think that social media, it's ever changing. Um, there are things that I think that we can really tap into, whether it's moving to other platforms such as, you know, uh, TikTok or even podcast, stuff like that. We can get really creative with this, and I think that's something that com the community would respond to. Sam, if you had to boil it down, what would be some of the biggest priorities you're trying to make sure that we can get out of uh, if you had to boil that down? The biggest priorities? Uh, just to make sure that the community is in the know of everything that's going on and making sure that... The communication is timely, right? That, yes. That, that's right now. We're trying to do our best to make sure that striking that balance between informing people, letting them know what's going on without overdoing it. Right but also to the point where telling our story. Mm -hmm. I, I think that that's uh, the, the thing that we want to always come at is that there's a lot of pretty neat and exciting things going on. And I think if we can be able to help tell that story, that's going to be something that I think is going to really connect and resonate, not only with our direct stakeholders, but I also think as we're trying to do is to also get that out beyond to the greater community uh, to also do that. I know that is, you look at the uh, Sanford Spotlight, things we've been doing, as I listen from people in our civic groups in doing that, they may not have people in the schools anymore, but boy, do they still want to be in what's going on, and right. they're really interested in that. So I think that's a big focus of, of what we're trying to do. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm thrilled. I mean, I'm a newspaper guy, right? But I'm, you know, that's going by the way of the dinosaur. So to create a communication link between, for all citizens of the community and surrounding communities. I hope you have the ability to, not you personally, I hope the community um, allows you to work with Jordan at the city and with Sarah SSR TV. I think that's just an underutilized asset. Right. I mean, there's, it's a mountain to climb, but everything is there for you, and I think the citizens want it. Mm -hmm. The number of topics you could talk about or, or inform the community about is, I mean, it's, it's big, right? How you would prioritize that on a weekly basis, monthly, quarterly, annually—I I can't even imagine. It's Herculean, but I like the fact that you want to make it creative because there's a lot of fun to be had if you're in that world, which you yeah, are. Absolutely. So I'm looking forward to seeing it. So thank, thank, thank you. Yes, uh, thank you for your work. I too agree that um, I love to hear the creativity piece. I think that uh, recognizing. Uh, the way in which people communicate uh, is really important, mm -hmm. you know, and recognizing those different platforms is incredibly important. Um, I loved the board that you created, and um, I will be interested to follow that process to see how that works sure. um, for all of the various schools. I know last year we had a community publication um, that weekly would put out um, like the game schedule of the week for all of the games. And that was super helpful for me um, as someone who, you know, didn't have a child participating, but as a community member wanted to support. And so that board kind of made me think of um, that weekly bulletin that you would get on Monday. And I was like, oh, I'd like to remember Haley's band concert, right, right. but am I going to remember it? Mm -hmm. You know, so. Um, I'm really looking forward to see um, how the work propels. Thank you. 
Um, thank you for everything you're doing so far. I, I, I think one, um, another stakeholder, if you may, would be the Sanford News with Zendel, because I know she does some excellent work, um, and a lot of times does relay a lot of what we talk about at the school committee member, uh, meetings, and it's just another avenue of getting the information out. Um, I hope that, you know, I know I'm not trying to, with the AT meetings or such, that's, you know, when you have all the administrators together, that maybe would be an idea of like when you could kind of teach the thrill share and such, because, you know, how I receive communication could be different from everybody else in the room, but I definitely love the pull out, the push out texts um, as quick reminders. Um, I know, uh, you know, the middle school had put some work in the school counselors to do um, a vaping information, and I, I don't think anybody came. Um, so that just says kind of like that newsletter is maybe not reaching everybody that it should and maybe we could be um, have ways of improvement. So I'm just grateful that you're part of the Sanford team now and going to help us let everybody know what's going on. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I'll definitely do a better job of finding out more of the, the, the vaping sessions, stuff like that. So, yeah. I well, just, I didn't know about it either. So, you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> it's not on you. It's on no, all of no, us. I, I understand, yeah. I just wanted to say thank you. I'm very, very excited that we had a chance to see this. Um, we needed you, you're here, and I love your energy. I love everything you say about creativity and just everything. Thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to seeing how this develops and where you're at, where we all are at at the end of the school year coming up. Thank you. Before Sam leaves, as stakeholders here, because uh, as parents or grandparents, are there any other feedback or suggestions or recommendations for uh, Sam to be able to uh, continue on that might not be Encompass's plan or some other things to be able to be on the lookout for or consider? I, I would consider, you know, again, it's all how you communicate, but maybe a general email box that people could send in um, what's going on in the community to you, because I feel like it would make your job easier. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That definitely would be helpful. You sure? Um, I do feel going back, and I, I know that I bring this up at nauseam, so I apologize for bringing it up again. Um, I was a lover of the weekly um, superintendent reports that came out on Sundays, which was a, a, just basically communication that was going on in the upcoming week about upcoming events, what was going on really well in all the schools and throughout the community. And um, we went away with that because of the new website and all the bells and whistles that it has. Um, I'm grateful that you're going to be able to teach us to use all the bells and whistles, and I'm sure they just haven't been touched upon. But I do think, um, I know that... Um, Liz Dudgeon, you know, when I used to put on a lot of events, I would email her and then she would add it to it. So I think it's a great opportunity um, with your email that was just on the presentation that people can say, oh, you know, McPride's PTA is doing an event for this and that. Email Sam and he'll help, um, you know, spread the word. So I, I think if people, the more people know that they can do that, um, they will, it'll start coming. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. can stay definitely for the student avenue Instagram is a very strong connection yeah. point a lot of people check that daily and good posts grab attention for sure and I think like the the Spartan Times the, the newspaper they they do an excellent job and that's something that I want to have more communication with Kelly kind of going forward to make sure we're all on the same page with that so yeah it's finding that balance where some people like to have all the information in one place other people like it to be in pieces uh, coming out, but just having that consistent presence to be able to keep people notified with that, I think, is is critical. Thank you. Okay, we're moving on to director's reports. Okay, Mr. Lemling, come on up. Uh, Sam's a coordinator, so he got to go under my report. As a director, you get to go under your own report. And so that's why you had to wait a little longer. I appreciate that. that. Thank you guys for, for taking the time to invite me back. Um, it's, it's been great. Uh, I know that I'm here to, to kind of give a fall wrap up. Um, it was an awesome fall. Um, I know that there is... Okay, no, that's okay. Preoccupied, that's okay. 
couldn't do any of the stuff without Sarah anyways. So wanted to give some recognition to, to our fall teams. Uh, here's a kind of a rundown of our, our individual teams. Uh, our cross country team had individuals qualify for the regional uh, race, which was, was awesome. We did not qualify as a team, but individuals did. I know that the numbers are starting to build back up for that. I'm really excited about the direction that the uh, cross country team is gonna be going in. Our football team advanced to the semifinals, uh, fell to Thornton Academy, who ended up playing in the state championship. It was a great game in that monsoon style rain a couple weeks back. Um, our field hockey team made it to the quarterfinals and, and lost to Gorham. Uh, our boys soccer, as we had recognized tonight, were you know, the MPA sportsmanship of winners, so I think it was a, it was a great year uh, for our boys soccer team. Our girls soccer team hosted a home quarterfinal playoff game for the first time, at, at least in my 11 years, uh, being involved with Sanford and Sanford Athletics, so that was a huge step in the right direction. And then volleyball advanced to the regional final, and they lost to an absolute juggernaut of Biddeford. Uh, it was tremendous to, to make it to that game and, and see how well our girls played against you know a team that's um, been playing volleyball since I was back in high school in 2007. Uh, so they've been they've been playing volleyball for a long time. We're you know our fifth year and we're in the regional final. So I'm really really proud of that. And as as important as it was for our fall teams to have some success, we had. Probably one of the coolest things that I can kind of tote is, is our, uh, we had 45 students who were on the all academic team. Um, that, was, that was really cool and headlined by 16 girls from the girls soccer team. Um, so in order to get on that, you have to have a 92 and a half or a 93 uh, unweighted GPA. So that's, that's pretty impressive. I don't know that I would have been there in high school, but it was great to, to have so many kids there. We had 15 all conference athletes um, across all of the sports and then we had six all state athletes and a couple of more kind of coming in as the press herald is starting to, to un, uh, unroll their stuff. And I know that uh, we had another student who was just recognized at the uh, boys all-star soccer game as, as the MVP. Uh, so I'm trying to get a little bit more information from him and his parents to, to be able to recognize him here in, in the next coming weeks on social media. Um, as we start our, our winter season, um, I'll start with the middle school because they started you know forever ago it seems now. They, they started on November 7th. Uh, we are going to offer, you know, three teams right now, and then in the second season they'll, they'll have wrestling. Uh, but we have two teams for uh, basketball. Uh, you have boys basketball with 27 athletes for a 7th uh, grade team and an 8th grade team. We have two cheering teams with a 7th and 8th grade team with, with 26 athletes there. Our girls basketball team with two teams again um, with 21 athletes. And, and like I said, wrestling will start in late January, early February. We're in the process of putting... Uh, that schedule together and, and I know that kids are obviously pretty excited about having a second winter season as they're not entirely sure whether they want to play basketball whether they want to wrestle uh, so they'll have both opportunities at, at the middle school. Um, the high school we started winter sports on November 21st. Um, our boys basketball team we have three teams we have a, a varsity team a JV team and, and a freshman team or a first team we have 27 athletes on that team. Uh, our cheer numbers are a little bit smaller this year but um, I think things are, are, are doing really well there. We have 14 athletes and, and a new addition to the team that I'm excited to see on Friday night. Um, our girls basketball team, we have, we have 23 uh, students there with, on two teams for a varsity and a, and a JV team there. Um, we have one athlete playing ice hockey this year with um, Marshwood, Noble, Trape uh, competing down there. Sorry, I was losing my train of thought trying to count as to who was in that co-op. Um, our indoor track, this is the first time, you know, I'd say we've ever had indoor track, but I, I'm not sure if I can go that far back in history. Uh, I know in recent memory, this is the first time we've had our own uh, indoor track team. So we have 17 athletes competing in the boys and girls. It's super exciting. We're going to have all of our meets at USM. Um, we're going to compete not as a co-op, as our own individual team. And I really look forward to, to seeing that team grow. I know Traditionally, Sanford has always had strong outdoor track teams, so I don't think it'll be long before those numbers are, are continuing to grow and, and we're hopefully one of those dominant teams in, in the SMA. Um, our swim team, we've, we've co-opted with uh, Massabesic. Uh, so we have 11 swimmers right now and, and hoping through the co-op we're going to be able to get the swim program back in, in, in the right direction. Um, you know, I have a great swim coach uh, from Massabesic, Carrie Chamberlain, who's doing an awesome job, who is leading that in the right direction and knows more about swim than, than anyone else that we had um, kind of be involved. So it's, it's great to, to see where that's going to go. 
Unified, probably my favorite winter sport. Um, I don't know if I should say that out loud, but Unified's pretty amazing. So that starts on January 2nd with uh, the first game on the 20 23rd of January. And then last but not least, uh, we have wrestling. And we have 35 uh, athletes, boys and girls, on that team. I know, as Aiden had said earlier, uh, they went to the, the Viking duels this weekend and, and took third. And it was uh, funny as I went into the room and I congratulated all, uh, all of them on their third place finish. And, and they wanted to boo me out of the room because they, they thought they'd left a little bit on the table, and which is exciting that they're setting the bar pretty high. So I'm, I'm really excited to, to see what's going on there. I, I know their home opener is uh, December 21st. So there should be a big crowd for that, I hope. And I know, fingers crossed, if everything comes in the mail, we'll hopefully be able, be able to have a state championship banner to show off on that night as well. Um, I listed that we'll have over 50 home events uh, this winter happening at the high school, and that doesn't include any of the track meets or the ice hockey games or, or you know, any of that stuff that's, that's not on campus. So it'll be busy, and I know I'd shared in the fall, if you get something, you know, you're bored some night, there's probably something going on down at Sanford High School. And then the middle school will play all their games at the middle school gym. Uh, the cheerleaders will be on the sidelines uh, for, for most of the games there. And then um, the wrestling season will start in, in February, and they'll have all their wrestling meets in the gymnasium as well. Uh, as we move on to, to upcoming events, I know I had kind of talked about a little, and I know JP and had kind of stolen my thunder a little bit earlier, again. Um, but we are hosting, um, you know, the SMA Student Athlete Summit tomorrow at Sanford High School. So the 17 um, SMA schools will be in attendance tomorrow. It's really cool that, you know, they all wanted to come to Sanford. As, as the new guy, I kind of sat back and said, I don't really know what's going on. And they said, well, you have such a beautiful facility that, that we're coming to your place. And I said, all right, well, we'll figure it out. Uh, so there's going to be almost 200 kids uh, from, from local high schools in tomorrow, and, and we've got guest speakers coming in from Positive Coaching Alliance who are going to talk about sportsmanship and, and the idea of honoring the game. Uh, you know, there's been a trend throughout social media and, and unfortunately of parents and, you know, spectators not always being respectful towards officials and, and the athletes playing, so we're going to hopefully be able to put a positive spin on on what games should look like, and, and we have 10 really great representatives coming from Sanford tomorrow, and, and I look forward to, to where that's going to go. Uh, on 12-9, I, I know JP had mentioned about the toy drive, but we are going to have five basketball games at night. I'm, I'm sure my wife will be a little um, wondering why I decided to do that when I come home and I'm tired, um, but excited to have Scarborough uh, come down for all five games. Um, we have the, the annual SWAT on the, the first weekend of January. We have our unified home opener against Mass Vesic on Monday the 23rd. Uh, the very next day we're going to host the 8th grade boys and girls um, basketball games. That's their season finale against Noble at, at the high school trying to, to start something cool where you know some of those middle school teams can finish their, their regular season games at the high school to get them ready for what will look like when they come to the high school. Uh, we're hosting uh, the SMA cheer competition, and then the following weekend we have the MPA regional cheer competition at Sanford. I uh, got pretty lucky again. Mr. Peterman's a, a pretty big supporter of the cheer since he's on that committee, but he said, hey, guess what? First year we're not going to have just one. We're going to have two. So those will be two pretty fun weekends back to back. And then lastly, I'm, I'm hoping for a really great weekend as everyone else is heading off to February vacation that we're going to be uh, hosting the state championship uh, for wrestling. And it would be great to, to win a state championship in our own building um, that weekend as we head off onto, onto vacation. Um, as we go to the next page, and, and I know Amy was trying to take a, take a picture of it, um, and I know it talks a little bit of it about social media down at the bottom, and I, I had kind of talked about this in the, in the fall, but we're continuing to use Huddle and Huddle Focus, and, and thank you to Sarah for WSSR-TV because she's able to stream all these things for us, and um, it's great to have our freshman boys or our JV girls or our varsity boys, any of those events, um, whether it's going to be our SMA cheer competition, all of those things are going to be online and streamed. It makes it really great for, for families to, to be able to watch. I can't tell you all the people I, I see around town that say their uncle from Virginia was watching the game and, you know, why did this happen? And I was like, that's, you know, it's impressive outreach and it's great to have that, you know, all free of charge. Um, continue to use the Our School app. Uh, that's on the left and the right hand side. And, um, anyone can follow any team that they would like. You don't have to sign up. You don't have to make accounts. You don't have to do any of those things. You can follow the team that's specific to you. And, and I know when I had my parent meeting not too long ago, I 
talked about, hey, it's important if, if you don't necessarily know where you're going and you've got a, a freshman or, or someone who's the first time they're playing, if you download this app, you can click on the schedule and it'll give you directions to the school, to the gym, to, to whatever facility you're going to be in that, that really helps you know, go a long way instead of you know, trying to GPS it or come up with whatever off the top of your head you think you know how to get there from 25 years ago. Um, and, and like we had talked about, What's it called um, you know, social media is a, a, a pretty big piece, and I know JP touched on uh, Instagram being something that, that people are always uh, kind of in, in tune with, and we've started using Instagram this year, and I wasn't sure how it was going to go, but, but JP's right. A lot of kids are, are into Instagram, and, and we had, I think, gained over 530 followers, which I think is, you know, a ton for me, probably not for other people, but um, people are interacting with that account. They're, they're seeing what's going on, and it, they're able to follow, uh, you know, athletes of the week. We were doing the hard hat winners for football, and we we're posting game updates, you know, post games, you know, letting people know what time the games were happening. It was really great as, as the fall sports were, were kind of kicking off, and it seemed like we were getting rain and thunderstorms every other day, and it was great to be able to, to post some of that information and, and, and for the kids. So uh, I think that adults are, are kind of getting there, and I think there's other ways that we can continue to share that information as well. Um, Continuing on with, with the Leadership Council is something that I'm going to be starting here next week. Um, we had weekly meetings, and I know JP was there this fall, and, and I, I think I've, I've said to those guys it's selfishly more for me uh, than it is for them at times because it's great to be able to, to be with the leaders and the captains from the fall teams, and I'm going to start again with the winner because uh, there's times where you miss the classroom and you have that you know, interaction with the kids to, to be able to talk about what's going on. So, so we were meeting every Wednesday in the fall. We discussed leadership, team goals, culture, climate, uh, all the things that are really important to, to know kind of in what direction we want to, want to take the, the athletic department. So the, the kids this fall were awesome. Um, any of the kids that had shown up that had, had attended 70% or more of the meetings got themselves a t-shirt. Um, you know, probably going to have to try to come up with something different if there's some, some athletes this winter who are going to be repeat, you know, they're probably not going to need another t-shirt, so we'll come up with something, something else, but it's an opportunity for them to hopefully share, you know, their thoughts and opinions that they might not necessarily pop in, you know, to my office to say so. Um, so those are, those are some of the things there for the slides. Some other things that I just wanted to share were, you know, thank you to all the parents for, for the support this fall. I, I totally get it as to kids are everywhere. You have kids at, you know, three or four different schools and you would find the time somehow, some way to, to get them from one place to another and to pick them up and, and a coach isn't waiting till nine o'clock at night to, you know, to bring a kid home because someone forgot. Um, all the fall game help and, and the custodians were, were absolutely amazing. I don't know if you could show up to any of our sites and, and, not, and notice that there was a, an event the night before. Uh, everything was always clean. Everything was always put away. People were, were treated with respect. It was, it was really cool to, to get some of those notes in the mail. Uh, received a, a note from a woman in Bangor who had come down and, and attended uh, the football game against, against Sanford, and, and she was glowing about the, the facilities and you know, said that I did such a job, you know, great job designing them. And I obviously can't take any credit for anything, but I, I certainly patted myself on the back and said, you know, you did a great job with that. Um, so that's a, that's a credit to, to all of you take guys. Take the credit when you can, Mr. Lemlin. <laughs> take the credit when you can. Um, you know, I want to I give a huge thank you to the, to the Red and White Foundation. They're doing uh, an, an awesome job. They said they had a, a, an amazing fall with the boosters and the stands always being full. And you know, hopefully they're raising some funds that we can then turn around and, and use for, for athletics, for the things that, that the kids need and want, not for necessarily things for me. Um, we had our first fall awards night with some normalcy. It was really cool to, to be able to get back and, and recognize kids and parents and families and all be in the same room together and not be six feet apart and every other seat and uh, having masks on, it was, it was cool to, to be able to do that. And I think there was a collective breath of fresh air with, with that opportunity. Um, and then the environment that we had all fall, you know, there was some really awesome Friday night experiences with football with some huge crowds from homecoming to, you know, the mass VSIC night with, with Chase Fromweller. That was absolutely incredible to, you know, even the nights where it was a little bit calmer and, and you could hear, uh, you know, our gold medal band. Um, where on other nights you might not necessarily get a chance to hear that because there was pushing 2,500 people plus in, in the stadium and, and probably even more. So it was, it was an awesome fall, and I look forward to a great winter. And, you know, this Friday night it gets all kicked off, so I'd love to see you guys if, if you ever have. Well, we'll see some of you guys there. So, awesome. I would just say one thing that I learned at the winter sports meeting the other night um, 
from the red and white president um, was that if you don't have time to volunteer, they do take donations as well. So you can always, um, you know, chips, drinks, whatever that they can sell, they're willing to take, which would help my guilt of not being able to help them. Yeah, no, that was one of the cool things that, that uh, I'm glad that Mr. Bulldog came and, and shared that night at the, the parent night, because like a lot of people, a lot of people are busy, but not busy enough sometimes to make a crock pot of mac and cheese and hot dogs or, and to, to donate it on any of our larger events with the SWAT or the cheering tournaments or uh, some of that stuff that's coming in, because they can turn around and, and they can sell that. And I can tell you at the wrestling meet, and Aiden will probably tell you that mac and cheese and hot dogs will, will get gobbled up. I, I think that they'll go through 40 plus boxes of mac and cheese. So if anyone wants to donate, you know, a crock pot that doesn't take a, a crazy amount of time, the, the Red and White Foundation is always very, very appreciative of it. And uh, while I struggle to boil water sometimes, I can still make the mac and cheese on, on that weekend. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to give kudos to the, you know, coming out of COVID, the fall football games. Um, it just felt really great to be back in that community atmosphere. Also, I really like the work that you're doing with the Leadership Council. Um, and I love new traditions such as the eighth grade teams uh, closing out their season at the high school. Um, a suggestion I would have would be for the athletic de department um, to potentially um, counsel with their coaches on individual team funders or plans and guidelines, um, developing an operating budget for, for each coach who is rolling out a fundraiser so that we're identifying before rolling out the fundraiser where the money is being allocated. So we're kind of remembering what are we fundraising for. Um, and I'm not really sure right now if those guidelines are in place. Um, yeah, no, so that, that is one of those things that we, we talk about in the coaches' meetings before the start of the season because as a longtime football coach, it was always one of those frustrations as you're getting the kids to try to sell and the kids are like, well, you know, I'm all fund fundraising for is the $25 T-shirt at the end. And it's like, no, so, you know, you could boil it back down and say these are the things that we need to do. Um, you know, and specifically talking about the times that I was a football coach, we would think about, yeah, it was T-shirts, but there was also pregame meals and there was postgame meals and there was awards at the end um, or it was the, the banquets that we would go to that the football team would, you know, would cover. And, and so it was always important to remind those coaches of you need to have a plan for, for what you're doing. You're not just trying to raise, you know, a whole bunch of money if, if you know, the kids need to know what that goal is. But that is good to, to remember that. And, and community, I think, yeah. you know, making sure that the community has a good idea of what those fundraisings dollars are being spent for because as a community member especially at, at the rollout of new seasons every single team is fundraising you know and every team has a different fiscal need you know your golf team has a different need than your football team but there's um not a lot of education around um what and how and when and where needs are being met they're just blanket fundraisers does that make sense absolutely okay I'm not sure if we've met, but if not, hi. <laughs> Great information, but more importantly, your, your passion and genuine presentation was really clear to me. So it was a great first impression. I was really impressed with your attendance, so thank you. Thank you. That one thing, uh, you mentioned it, that um, I know I'm really proud of, you talked about the uh, fan from Bangor who raved about the facilities. This fall, uh, you hosted the soccer regional championships for Southern Maine, and you highlighted, you know, tomorrow, uh, when we've got each school in our conference sending 10 ath student athletes here to that summit. Uh, we've done that, we did that a few years ago, and there's a reason they're coming back, because we do it the right way. And then you're talking about hosting the state wrestling tournament in the state in the regional cheering championships, uh, and those uh, boy girl double headers. Those are those things that there's a lot of work there, but there's a lot of benefit that also comes back to promote our athletic program, but it also promotes Sanford and also comes back into people to do that. And so uh, I know that there's a lot of work that goes into that. It sounds it's nice to put up on the screen, but I want to thank you for taking those on. Uh, to be able to do that because that too is uh, a big benefit to uh, to our school department, our community. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
I just wanted to add to that and say thank you to you and to Valerie and to your babies because your job takes up a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of everything. Oh, so, yeah. but uh, school community is very happy to have you. The community in general is, and so thank you for everything you're doing. Awesome. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you guys. Have a great night. Thank you. Get out while you can. Get home for yeah. bedtime. <laughs> go, go, go. <laughs> Steve, you're on. Good evening. At our last school committee meeting, I gave you an update on pre-K. I let you know they were going to have some observations um, by the Department of Ed. And so last week, the Department of Ed um, did do observations in all of our pre-K classrooms. We had Sue Gallant, who is a teacher from Southern Maine. She has a lot of experience with pre-K and early childhood education. And we had Marcy Whitcomb, who comes from up north, who has a lot of experience with Head Start. And so they came and conducted observations in all of our programs. And they also met with the administrative team, um, the elementary administrative team after school one day last week. Um, during our meeting with Marcy, they, we talked about what's going well, what are we working through, and really what are some next steps um, with that. First of all, uh, what's going well is really our schools have welcomed and embraced our pre-K programs. Um, we're at full enrollment. Um, the classrooms have the furniture and supplies that they need for the most part um, for student success and teacher success. Um, one area in terms of what we're working on in terms of supplies now is getting some technology into those classrooms. And when we look at technology, not looking at iPads or computers for our pre-K kiddos, but really looking at what are some whole classroom technology things um, that teachers could use. Um, for instance, we've just purchased an Osmo um, where um, for the classrooms, and the next thing they've asked for is electronic microscopes. So when they go outside and they uh, you know, they find a bug, they can bring it in, they can look at it underneath the microscope and things like that. So, um, but for the most part, we have what we need. Um, we've worked out a lot of the logistical things, um, transportation, breakfast, lunch, um, you know, how are they going to enter the building, how are they going to leave the building, what are we going to do if they have a toileting accident, how are they going to do naps, so a lot of those logistical things we've walked, worked through. There's some, still some challenges, but those are going well. Um, we have a curriculum in place with an assessment system that we're working through the first year of implementation. We've completed our first round of parent conferences, and um, this week they are working on their final um, fall written progress report to go home with families. So there's a lot to go well, a lot the, that staff um, should be proud of. What are we working through? Um, as with all of our classrooms, pre-K is no different. We are working through some academic challenges and some behavioral challenges with some of our uh, four-year-olds and new five-year-olds. Um, teachers are working through making those referrals to Child Development Services, which is a special education um, provider for special education services. And really, we talked a lot about at our meeting about those behavioral supports that some of our four-year-olds are needing. Um, and what resources are we currently using to support those kiddos? Um, we've talked about expanding the role of our behavior coaches to have them go in and support us um, using our school counselors and also some outside supports that the DOE, uh, that they can provide for us as well um, as we work to support those kiddos. So that's sort of what we're working through. Um, next steps, and this is really where I think it was really helpful to meet with the DOE team. You know, what things should we be thinking about as we move forward? Um, they really pushed us to think about parent involvement family involvement, um, how are we getting families into our classrooms, um, talked about expanding, now's the time to start thinking about expanding the role of our art, music, and PE teachers, how are we going to provide some professional development for those staff and working with four-year-olds as we look to expand the, that programming for those kiddos, and looking at transition planning, how are we going to transition um, our pre-K kiddos into kindergarten uh, for next year. So really some big things to start thinking about as we roll into the new year uh, for our advisory team um, that we'll be meeting next week and starting to plan some of those things out. Some good news, really good news that we're really excited about um, is that our pre-K kiddos will not need to be rescreened for kindergarten. 
So that um, is good news that we will be sharing with our kindergarten staff. Um, so that's going to impact the end of the year for our kindergarten students. So we'll work through that and figure out what that means um, with that. So overall, we're going to get a written report. Each teacher will get written feedback um, from the department that is between the teacher and the consultant that came. Um, and then they will provide a final report to Mr. Nelson and the central office team and the administrators that will look at our programs holistically um, that I'm envisioning will incorporate some of these things that we um, talked about. But overall, I think, um, I think it was a positive visit. Um, it is pretty intense for our pre-K teachers. It's not a sit here for 15 and 20 minutes. There's three short observations or 20 to 30 minutes long. They step out, they take some notes, they go back and observe again. They step out and so they do that two or three times so it's a pretty intense but i think hopefully they'll find it positive and they will be coming back a couple more times as we end the year so that's just an update tonight on um, pre-k and the other piece i mentioned it's not on the agenda but just in terms of the transportation update um, that is not due to having new drivers um, i know a couple of families got excited when they saw new routes coming through um, that was just looking at efficiencies and um, it, Rose at the Ledgemere had an opportunity to look at the routes and really look at efficiencies. So that's what that was about to improve our timing as we're always looking to do. And that's all I have this evening until policies. Thank you. John. Steve, I think when we started this, we talked about enrollment of like 96 students. Is that right? Is, is there a wait list and what, what's expected next year for numbers? Or so um, the enrollment uh, target was 96. October 1st enrollment, um, that cutoff, I believe we're at 95. Um, right now, we're currently at 96, and we have two or three families that are on a wait list. As we look forward to next year, um, we are looking to still have that 96 cap um, based on what our current need um, in the community looks like. Um, the only one difference from next year that we'll talk more about at uh, budget time is looking at Head Start, looking at that program at a Head Start, and looking at do we want to bring that program into our existing elementary schools um, with that so they all be under our umbrella. But in terms of enrollment for next year, we're looking through that 96 target. Okay. Anyone else? <clears throat> Matt, do you have anything? Thank you so much, Steve. Okay, we're moving on. No new business, no old business. This, we're going to hear from, <coughs> excuse me, Mr. Nelson, resignations, retirements, staff appointments, staff transfers, and staff nominations. All right, I'll announce the following uh, resignations. Jasmine Dort, uh, seventh grade math teacher at the middle school. Jennifer Young, Ed Tech 3 at the middle school. Margaret Cannon, kitchen personnel at the high school. Amy Coster, a special education teacher at MCS. Megan Ward, a, a teacher at the Bridge Program, and Sarah Fuentes, EdTech 1 at Sanford Middle School. I want to thank all of uh, those people and wish them best of luck. Staff uh, transfers, uh, a couple of those to announce. Uh, Becky McCann from the Math Intervist EdTech 3 at the Middle School. She'll be moving into that seventh grade math um, teacher long-term sub position that was created uh, with that earlier resignation. And then also transferring Katrina Hartford um, uh, from Sanford Middle School over to the high school as a second shift custodian. And there are no uh, nominations this evening. Okay, moving on to policies and oh. procedures. Uh, sorry, I meant staff appointments. I missed those. Oh. I, uh, with that, I'll backtrack to item M. Uh, kitchen personnel, Renee Bernier. Uh, added at the middle school and then uh, for the athletic program as um, athletic director Lemlin talked about the indoor track program we've got Lindsay Strout as an assistant indoor track coach as a, an appointment sorry okay now policies and procedures I have tonight a uh, second reading of two policies and one procedure this will be the last policies of 2022 as we have a new school committee coming on in January so the first one is policy DJH, Purchasing and Contracting, Procurement Staff Code of Conduct. Um, this policy is intended to assist school units in complying with the requirements of the uniform grant guidance. 
a set of rules that requires local school administrative units who receive federal awards to have in place specific written procurement and conflict of interest policies and procedures which should apply to any solicitation or contract for goods or services that uses federal funds. The second procedure is procedure DJE-R, purchasing and contracting, procurement staff code of conduct. Um, this procedure ensures compliance with the procurement and purchase of property, goods, and services using any federal award in whole or in part that is subject to the uniform federal grant guidance. And the last one is policy JLC. D, which is administration of medication to students. And this added the rules for the use of naloxone, um, epinephrine, auto injectors, and use of sunscreen in schools. And I recommend approval of the two policies and the one procedure. And just to remind everyone, these are the second readings. Uh, we didn't do those at our last meeting because there'd only been one week between meetings um, back in November. But also the, uh, the first two, um, DGH and the procedure DJE-R, those were a result of the audit for our food service program. That as a result of that, we needed to make sure that those uh, were updated. Uh, so we've done that. And then the third one is the JLCD, which is um, Steve has been working with our school nurses on, also with the guidance of Maine School Management Association uh, with that. Okay, looking for a motion. I'll make the motion. Thank you, Amy. Seconded by Jen. All in favor? All in favor. Okay, moving on. There's no items for future agenda. Calendar announcements, Mr. Nelson. Sure, so our next school committee meeting will be on Monday, um, December 19th. Uh, that'll be a meeting when we say goodbye to John and Jonathan uh, to recognize uh, their service. There'll also be a uh, workshop prior to that meeting on the 19th uh, for the superintendent evaluation, the annual evaluation. And then our school committee meetings in um, January uh, will be on January 9th. Monday and then a Monday January 23rd and we will have a workshop before the January 9th meeting uh, ahead of time that's usually where we have the audit information that will be shared at that first meeting in January and then also uh, there will also be um, a, a election of a chair and vice chair as well as committee assignments at that first meeting in January and just wanted to let people know with our two school committee members uh, Melissa Simpson and Kelly Termath, I do have meetings set up with them uh, coming up where to help uh, welcome them to the school committee and kind of do a, um, an orientation to help get them um, welcomed and set up for success. Okay. Thank you very much. And just to remind those holiday concerts on the 15th and the 16th, uh, middle school will be, what's that? 1415, sorry, I should have wrote that down. Uh, 14 is on Wednesday for the middle school, and Thursday the 16th is the middle school uh, with those holiday concerts. Jen. December can get really busy, and so I just didn't want to lose sight. Um, I wanted to just give a shout out to Chief Anderson, Deputy Chief Small, and our SRO, George. Joe Jordan at SMS today. Um, I spoke with Officer Jordan later in the day and he just couldn't say enough about how amazing it was to hear over his radio all day, mission accomplished, box delivered. Our police department was out in force today and delivered uh, 60 boxes to um, local families and Sanford students and I just have no words because it was just so appreciated and so I just wanted to be on record not that they need that public rec recognition but I think it's important um, as you know a government entity when we can collaborate with other government entities it really strengthens our community and and puts forth that unified front so big shout out to chief anderson deputy chief small and sro jo joe jordan thank you thank you jen that's important amy did you have anything you 
well, just congratulations on the Box of Joy, and um, it's a, a big feat, and um, thank you for your organization in doing it. Okay. Without any further ado, recommendation to adjourn this meeting at 719. Seconded. Firsted by John. Seconded by Jen. All in favor? All in favor. Second.